today I'm going to talk about water-resistant drywall. So sometimes this gets called paperless drywall. There's also a product called MGO board. I'm actually going to talk about MGO board separately because I have enough to talk about with the drywall. But you've probably heard the term green board, paperless drywall, and regular drywall. So Hello everyone, I'm Cheryl Seco from AvoidingMold.com and today I'm going to talk about water-resistant drywall. Um, and in this context, we're usually talking about cleaning mold off of this stuff. Know that the best thing to do from the get-go is to avoid having mold in the first place. So let's start with understanding why mold grows indoors in our buildings. To grow mold spores, mold requires oxygen, it requires mold spores and it requires moisture and a food source. Now the mold spores are actually everywhere. Um, if we don't, you know, even outside. So we have mold spores everywhere. We can't do anything about that. Oxygen is pretty much everywhere. Moisture, we absolutely can control. And the food source is an interesting topic because on drywall, the paper face on regular drywall is an, is an organic food source because it's paper. Paper comes from, from trees. And, and so that's actually pre-digested. So it's much more susceptible to mold than even the wood framing in a building would be because it's not, it's not processed. So the paper component is very processed. Usually on the backside of drywall, it's not even painted. So there's no protection at all. And so that makes it very susceptible to mold if it gets wet. So the coat, the org inorganic part of drywall is the gypsum core. And whether you have paper or not, that is not a food source of mold, but know that dirt and dust is a food source and that's pretty much everywhere. So even though we get rid of the paper in paperless drywall, and the substitute for that paper is usually a fiberglass mesh, uh, we still have the potential for other things getting wet. So if there is a, a flood, if there is a leak where the, the board is saturated, it's still, and the wood is saturated, especially behind, the the drywall and, and metal isn't gonna, isn't going to make that better because it has all condensation concerns. But if we just talk about if there's a source of moisture, it may there may be nothing we can do about it. So we do want to make sure that we stop the moisture. So to stop mold, we have two strategies. One is deny the mold spores that are everywhere the required air and moisture that it needs to survive. Uh, on traditional resistant drywall, it's usually a thicker paper um, facing and backing that is heavily saturated with a waxy substance that prevents moisture and air from getting in. That's how that works. Without this, the goal is that the mold won't take root. Now, I, I also want to point out that when we put up drywall, we are cutting it. So that barrier is not going beyond the cut edge and, and that's where part of this starts to fall apart even though it might have this waxy coating, thick coating. The other option is to use another material for that outer layer on the drywall panels and the gypsum core panels rather than paper and that material can is oftentimes something that's a fiberglass material. MGO board is another product that is also uh, that kind of a, a cementitious core, but it doesn't have any other coating on it. Regardless, these materials, that's what's holding it together because it's made out of, out of um, crushed uh, gypsum. And so it needs another material to hold it all together and intact. So just know though that the manufacturers, even when they're making something and they're calling it mold resistant, that it's they're never guaranteeing that it's immune to mold, only resistant. So keep that in mind. The pros of moisture resistant drywall or paperless drywall are good resistance to moisture and mold. Um, it's pretty much the same to install and, and, and repair as regular drywall. It is notably more expensive, up to 50% more expensive. And remember the mold is, the mold prevention is not guaranteed. In fact, in most mold uh, resistant materials have a limitation on their warranties to say that if the material gets wet, that the warranties are void, any warranties that they do have. And that goes for paint too. So we talked about the, the price a little bit. Um, 
Obviously these surfaces should always be kept clean because the mold can grow on the dirt on the surface or dust, that fine dust that we can hardly even see in the air can support mold growth. And also know that neither of these materials, no kind of drywall should be used as a replacement for cement board as a backing material for, for ceramic tile. And so it's not just ceramic um, cement board that should go behind any kind of ceramic or Portland tile. It's, it's, it's also a sealant material, whether that's a, a coating or whether that's a fabric of some sort or a paper of some sort that's water resistant. So just know that, that this, I would never use any kind of drywall behind any kind of tile application. So we talked a little bit about the installation. There's a several brands, some of the big companies are USG, National Gypsum Company, American Gypsum, Georgia Pacific. Uh, Greenboard is a, a product that used to get used a lot. It's actually being phased out. It was considered water resistant, so a lot of people were using that in bathrooms. It was never intended to be a tile backer board. So even though your contractor might say that's what he wants to use, I wouldn't use it. And just know that that is a paper backed board that has kind of a light green tint to it. It's an older form. And as I said, it's being phased out because there are better products. The paperless drywall is a better product. Just remember that these products are not waterproof or mold proof. And the manufacturers do not say that they are. You can look that up. They do not prevent mold in the case of flooding when water saturates the drywall or when the framing is getting wet. And steel framing is not gonna solve this because steel framing can be really something that has a lot of condensation and causes a lot of water. So just know that the number one thing we need to be doing is managing the moisture. But in a case where you have the ability and the budget to use some of these paperless drywall components, it may be something that is helpful for you. So I just wanna talk about that and let people know about it. So if this is helpful, please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. For more free information on safe building, avoiding mold and water damage, visit avoidingmold.com.